And it's okay. Amen. This is just, you know, I, I just don't feel like I need to close the church. Amen. Amen. And look at all these people here that would have missed it. So I thank God for that. I was coming down the hill yesterday and uh, down my hill in the, my community. And I was like, man, I might need to think about canceling service. And the Holy Spirit told me, look, 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 look to your left. I looked to my left, Amazon, just delivering. He said, look to your right. Look to my right, FedEx, to the right. Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, people do what's important to them. Amen. And he asked me, he said, what's important to you? What's important to you? I said, your work is important to me. So we're going to have church. Amen. 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 Just be careful now. Don't you get in a wreck and be talking about, see, the pastor. And, you know, they scared y'all with that footage of the 100 car wreck. They kept showing that. I thought they was going to say it was COVID deaths involved. <laughs> much as they were showing it but they kept showing that because they don't want people going anywhere all right overcome 2021 part seven look at somebody say overcoming trials overcoming trials amen how many of you need to overcome a trial amen well the, the thing about church is and the thing about growing up in church we treat all trials the same every trial we call it the devil and every trial is not the devil. So I'm going to break down the various trials that we go through and what they really are so you'll know how to pray. You know, if you're praying wrong, nothing's going to happen. You're not getting results with the wrong prayers. Amen. God ain't going to have pity on you and understand because the devil is listening too. So if you don't put the devil in his proper place, you're not going to stop him. Jesus addressed the devil. He didn't ignore him. He addressed him with the word. And he said the right things based on what the devil was saying. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, don't y'all be, this ain't the quiet bunch, is it? It's all the noise makers at home. Okay. Amen. I need the feedback. There are many trials that believers can face. We go through unexpected things, consequential things, and things that are just what? Out of our control. Anybody ever been through something that was just out of your control? First Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. So don't think it's strange when you're going through things. Amen? You're going to go through things. Life is going to be life. You're going to have problems. You're going to go through things. Some of them are totally out of your control. Some of y'all grew up on the rough side of the mountain and don't even know how you ended up there. Wasn't your fault. Mama didn't want you. Daddy didn't want you. It wasn't your fault. You just, that was your life. Life happened to you. Amen. You lost loved ones. That's, that wasn't your fault. Life happened to you. Amen. Lost your job. Wasn't even your fault. Life happened. Can I keep preaching in here? You're going to, look at somebody say, you're going to go through stuff. You're going to go through stuff. Woke up one day and your husband didn't like you no more. Wasn't even your fault. Life happened. Woke up, you didn't like him no more. That's your fault. <laughs> somebody was like, oh. Looking for a crease. <laughs> God never promised that everything would go our way all the time. Life happens to us. Please somebody say life happens to us. Life happens to us and sometimes it can linger for a while. Life can come and sit down in your life and not get up for a while. You be like, life, get on out of here. Life ain't going nowhere. Nah, nope, my time's not up. I'm here for my appointed time. That's life. 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, what happens? Then I am strong. So Paul says, I take pleasure in life happening. However it happens. Through infirmities, reproaches, necessities. However it happens, I take pleasure because when I'm weak, that, that means God is going to make me strong. God did 
God did promise to always be here for us and go through the trials with us if we belong to him. Uh Uh-oh. Look at somebody and say, if you belong to him. Don't you be talking about God be with me. Jesus walks. (laughs) No, Jesus ain't walking with you if you're not with him. Amen. He's not with you if you're not with him. But he did promise to always be there if we belong to him. He promised to see us through everything that we face. Look at somebody say, he's always there. Matthew 28 and 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, Jesus speaking. And lo, I am with you always, even how long? Until the end of the world. God, he's not going anywhere. He's going to always be there. So no matter what you're going through, Jesus will be there. Amen? He looked at Peter. Peter starts sinking in the water. Now, Jesus could have stopped Peter from sinking. Because he grabbed him so he could start walking on water again. Jesus could have fixed that so he never started sinking. But he needed to sink. He needed to go through that. So he could understand when Jesus is there, he's there to pull you out. Amen. So he allowed him to sink just for that moment. He didn't allow him to drown. He allowed him to sink. And when Jesus put, I mean, when the devil petitioned for Peter and said, I I want to test Peter. Jesus warned Peter, but he didn't stop the devil. He said, the devil seeking to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail and when you come through this you're going to strengthen your brothers so he allowed Peter he said you're going to go through this Peter but this is going to work something out of you so he allows trials to happen but he's all look at somebody say he's always there He's always there. Okay, I'm breaking down three different types of trials. And the first type are trials that happen to evildoers, according to the Bible. All this is according to the Bible. This isn't somebody's philosophy, and this isn't Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Phil and all of those kind of things. You know, people, Christians read these New Age books now. You get a head full of demons trying to explain Why you feel the way you feel. And all you got to do is read the word. And listen to the preacher. Amen. 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 Let me hurry up and get this emoji off before somebody gets scared. (laughs) Evildoers. Some trials come because people are evildoers. Look at somebody and say, not me. me. I hope you mean that. And when people hear the word evil, they just think, oh, killing and... And murder. No, no. Evil is thinking the wrong thought about somebody. That's an evil thought. Shooting the finger on the freeway when somebody cuts you off. That's evil. That's an evil finger. That's the bad finger. Amen. Thinking the cuss words. That's evil in your heart. Looking at the woman and whistling. (laughs) I just showed my age, didn't I? (laughs) Whistling. (laughs) Ricky Ricardo? (laughs) (laughs) He don't whistle at women no more. (laughs) That's that's evil. (laughs) That's evil. Whistling in the but evil, evildoers, doing those things, those are evil. So it's not always belligerent somebody to death. There are other ways to be evil. You can be evil right in church, thinking stuff. Gossiping. Can't wait to get home to call and talk about somebody's clothes. That's evil. Amen. Woo! What goes on? Oh. You know, the older you get, the more you learn this lesson right here. What goes, does what go around come around? Can you escape it? You know why you can't escape it? Because God said he won't be mocked. 
If you could escape it, he would be mocked. Well, you can't escape it. Look at somebody and say, what goes around comes around. Amen. When we suffer through trials, we must always make sure we are not suffering as an evildoer. This means that we are doing things that we should not and are reaping the consequence of those actions. So some of our trials are reaping, it's us reaping consequences of evil that we did. Amen. Anybody, anybody, see, you can't rebuke the devil when you're reaping consequences. Should have rebuked him when the, he put the thought in your head to do what you did. You waited too late for the rebuke. So you can't go devil in the name of Jesus. Devil like, oh, no, I'm legal. <laughs> you shouldn't have done it. Amen. Can't be in jail just rebuking the devil. And you know you stole them cigarettes. Yeah. You know you stole it. You can't be in there rebuking the ward. No, get behind me. Yeah, 1 Peter 3 and 17, for it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for what? Well doing than for what? Evil doing. Everyone will reap all that they have sown. Look at somebody and say, be careful what you do. It's coming back. It's a promise. And no one can escape it. God makes sure that the law of reciprocity is always instated in mankind so that man's actions will punish themselves. Always remember, your actions are punishing you. Quit blaming it on God and God's judgment. And he, God's judgment is death to the wicked. That's God's judgment. So when God is judging, it's death. God's judgment is death. So most of the time, it's the law of reciprocity. It's what you did. It feels like the devil. That's because the devil was in you when you did what you did. And he's paying you back because he has legal right to. This is not a trial. This is a repercussion. Can I keep preaching? Galatians 6, folks don't like this kind of message. See, this is the kind of message that empty the church out. Wait a minute, God's grace is sufficient for everything. Boy, you ain't going to keep doing what you want to do and not pay for it. Amen. Sin costs you. You get paid for sin. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. That means sin comes with a price. Galatians 6 and 7, be not deceived. Ooh, don't you be, don't you be deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth. What will happen? That shall he also reap. Whatsoever. People don't like to connect, connect the dots. They don't like to connect the dots that their life sucks. And they won't connect it to the way they treat people. And so you're just reaping what you sow all the time. Can I keep preaching? Yeah. Be careful what you do, especially what? How you treat others. See, God is big on how you treat others. I mean, we got the, the, the sins in mind that we believe are the ones that lead to hell, the bad ones. Murder and adultery, fornication and, 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 and stealing. and Those are the sins in our mind that are just horrible. But the ones that are horrible to God are the ones we take for granted and believe they're not that bad. The seven that he named, all of them had to do with the way you treat people. Because he said the way you treat people is the way you treat me. That's all he has to judge you by. Since he's not here, the way you treat people, we're his representation here. So we either making him look bad or look good. So he's concerned about how we treat others. So it comes with grave 
consequences when we don't treat other people the way we want to be treated. Can I keep preaching in here? Reaping these types of consequences can lead to losing your own sanity. Y'all want to know why these folks have this mental illness now? And I'm talking about just schizophrenia, anxiety, just, just crazy. You know how they crazy? Because they treat people bad. Talk about people. You're not going to hate your father and mother and walk around okay mentally. That's going to take a mental toll on you. Your mind is going to have slippages. You can't carry resentment in your heart, hatred in your heart, and function normally. You're going to have some mind problems, thought problems. Yeah, mental illness. That's why they got all these medications for anxiety, depression, and anything you're feeling they have a drug for now. Because they know people are mistreating people. And instead of them fixing it, they just medicate them. Because you're going to reap that. It leads to you losing your own sanity. It causes grave illnesses. People are sick because of the way they treated people. Because they, a lot of them are carrying just old bitterness and hatred. You can't have faith with that. You can't have faith with bitterness. How are you praying for healing? That takes faith. But you got bitterness. That cancels faith. Look at somebody say, deal with what you need to deal with. Folk don't want to deal with nothing. That's why I don't like these messages. Amen. In the Bible, killing with your tongue is considered... Oh, wait, I didn't even finish. Reaping these types of consequences can lead to losing your own sanity, cause grave illnesses, and even what? Death. Death. Folks, die just being mean. In the Bible, killing with your tongue is considered murder. And those that do these things will not go unpunished in this life. Psalms 101. One and five, whoso privately slandereth his neighbor, him will I what? Cut off. But Jesus, you seem like you're blessing everybody, but you're not blessing, him. you're not blessing me. Well, because you are talking about your neighbor in private. You're gossiping. You're tearing folks down. He said he'll cut you off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. These folks are getting punished. By their own actions. Can I keep preaching? The next kind of trial that people face is life's challenges. Everyone will face these trials. Life's challenges. When we suffer life's ups and downs, we are usually dealing with issues that are out of our control. And they are just bad things that can happen to innocent people. Innocent means that it wasn't your fault. Amen? I didn't say good people because nobody's good. If we were good, nothing bad would ever happen. Can I preach in here? But because we're not good inherently, then we're in a world full of bad and bad things will happen. Whether it's our fault or not, whether we're innocent in it or not, it's just going to happen because we're not good. Romans 3 and 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, what? No, not one. Nobody's righteous. Amen. God is still there through it all, and he promised that the suffering is for that's the beauty. A little while. Look, somebody says, just for a little while. Just for a little while. Weeping may endure for a night. It's just for a little while. That's the beauty of it. When you're going through, always know. Brother, this will be over. You'll get past this. You've got past it before. You'll get past it again. Amen? It's just, look, somebody say, just for a little while. God is still there. 
He always, he will always bring mercy, healing, and peace after your storm has passed over. He'll always bring mercy, healing, and then what? Peace after your, anybody ever been through a storm? Were you better afterwards? That's what the storm was for. It'll make you smarter. It'll make you right. It hurts when you're in it. Oh, but your eyes change. The way you see life changes. You begin to appreciate things. Amen? Amen. A uh, pre-pandemic, I might have shut the church down because of this weather. But because of what we had to go through to have church during that pandemic, cops coming and talking noise and fighting with City Hall and all the stuff we did just to be outside. We outside in the rain with electrical equipment. <laughs> Voltage just pouring through the instruments. When we out there just making noise, that took a lot. And that, that wasn't no pressure on any of y'all. You know who the pressure was on? Me! Because I had to wake up and hear God to know this is what you want. If I'm out here and it's not what you want, they're going to make a fool out of me. So I had to make sure that it was the voice of the Lord I was following. That was a lot of pressure. So after I went through that pandemic, and I, I mean, uh, them services outside and all that, this snow, please. Please. Look at somebody say, we done seen the worst of it. This wasn't, this wasn't a hard decision. I don't want to ever close the church. I don't care if it's raining fire and brimstone. My Jeep going to be on the freeway, dodging it like a video game. I'm going to be with the saints. I'm going to gather with the saints. <laughs> Already been to the mountaintop. No, I'm just kidding. But, he, <laughs> but if you... <laughs> he will always bring mercy, healing, and peace after your storm has passed over. 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a what? A moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Our light affliction. Look at somebody and say, it's light. Now when it's on you, it feels a thousand pounds. But when it's behind you, you see, yeah, that, that, that was light. You know, I, I hadn't been in the gym in over a year, probably a year and a half. So I got back in there a couple of weeks ago. I started lifting and you know, I was bench pressing 315, doing six reps of that. You know, I was, you know. <laughs> Landon and Herman had me like legit. I went back in there, 115. <laughs> I was struggling, Herman making fun of me, and Landon rolling his eyes, and I just, I lost it. Because if you don't use it, it's just gone. It's gone. That weight, look, the, the, the 315 looks heavy, but when you can do it and you're conditioned to do it, it's not heavy, right? So when you're going through the trial, once you pass the trial and you're conditioned, it's a light affliction. It was heavy while you was in it. But once you come out of it, it's a light. Look at somebody say, what I'm going through right now is about to be a light affliction. For a light affliction. See, y'all ain't responding. I need more folk. Let's turn the Zoom on. Turn the Zoom on. These folk. This, this is the quiet folks. The quiet crowd. This is. For a light affliction, which is for but a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. He allows these things to happen to show us the difference between good times and bad times. Amen? Yeah, if you never saw bad, you wouldn't know good. So you got to go through the bad times to appreciate the good times. Makes the good times better. Like I just told you, being in here now means something totally different since we went through the time when we couldn't come in here. Amen? Membership grew. 
Yeah, people begin to appreciate it. So you got to go through the bad. Amen. You appreciate your husband and your wife even more after you have passed life's tests with them. You've gone through the tough times with them. They're still there. You still love each other. That's when your love has grown. Nothing can separate you once you've been through everything. You've passed those tests. Amen. That's why I don't need nobody with eight minutes of marriage trying to teach me marital, give me marital advice. And have a marriage ministry. Just got married and starting to marry. That's crazy. You ain't been through nothing. You can't teach me nothing. Let a few storms pass over that marriage. Amen. Let it be battle tested. Let the winds and the waves blow that joker. <laughs> yeah, because once you go through those things, it strengthens you. So God allows it. There has to be bad times in order for good times to be good. We must always remember that joy is coming in spite of how bad things seem. Amen. Psalms 30 and 5, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but what? Joy, joy. cometh when? Joy. Look at somebody say, joy is coming. Joy is coming. Morning is coming. Things will get better. They always get better. And I was going through some stuff. And the Holy Spirit just kept telling me, things are going to get better. He kept telling me, look around you. Look how I'm blessing you. What's wrong with you? Things are getting better and sometimes you don't even see it because you focus on the bad. God got angels around you fighting for you. You don't even see them. You don't even see them because you're still looking at the bad. But you will come through this. You look at somebody and say, I will come through this. And the third form of trial, trials for Christ's sake. This is 2021 right here. Oh, yes. Trials for Christ's sake. When we suffer for righteousness sake, we are destined for a great reward from God. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait for my reward. I'm getting one. Yeah, you can think that's, you know, you may not be sure about yours. I'm sure about mine. Oh, the Negroes. I got to deal with day to day, the email, the messages, phone calls, the text. Oh, I'm getting a reward, Jack. Oh, heavy shall my crown be with big old jewelry on it. Big old stuff. I want a big gaudy one. Just keep falling off. It's so big. Full of stuff. A nugget crown. I need a heavenly nugget crown. Wrapped in hair and bone. Try gold. For every Negro, I need a stone. I need a stone for every Negro. Every Negro. Whatever color they are, they all colors. White ones, the black ones, the Hispanic, uh, Asian. Every Negro that I got to deal with, I need a stone. I want a stone. When I come through the pearly gates, I might take a piece of it. Give me some of that gate. <laughs> but you're going to get a reward. It's guaranteed. That's why I talk like that. Because it's, look, somebody say it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. The word don't lie. So it's going to happen. He watches. What we are willing to go through for his name's sake. Did you just hear that? He watches what we're willing to go through for his name's sake. What we're willing to go through. Stephen, a young boy, willing to call out the council. They picked up stones. Willing. 
And the Bible said Jesus was so pleased that he left the right hand of the Father, stood up for Stephen. Boy, when you make Jesus stand, yeah, you might get your chance in 2021. He watches what we are willing to go through for his namesake and plans great things for us when we see him. And, you know, when God began to show me this, it made me stop thinking about the people that were doing me wrong. You really stop thinking about how people are doing you when you start thinking about what God is going to do for you. You got to put your mind on heavenly things. Romans 8 and 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also what? Can you imagine being glorified with Christ? Do you know the glory Christ is going to get when all this is over? He's going to inherit everything. And if you're a joint heir with him, you inherit it too. You know what joint heir means? Let me break it down. When you put somebody on your credit, because your credit ain't good enough, put somebody on your credit to try to get something, y'all are joint heirs. Y'all inherited that debt together. So if the other one default, you defaulted. If you default, they defaulted. Why? Because you're joint. That's why the Bible said don't co-sign for folks. That's in the Bible. Amen. I have folk I don't even know asking me to co-sign. I told the women in P31, I get, I get asked for money every day. Every, somebody think I got some money. I get asked for money every day. And I say no every day. <laughs> no, I ain't going to be no joint air with you. I don't want my money on that dirty ground you own. Your, 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 your ground is cursed. I'm not investing in that. <laughs> yeah, but that gives you an understanding of joint air. It's the same with Christ. So when he's glorified, you're glorified because you're joined together. So he suffered, guess what happens? You have to suffer. But when he reigns, guess what's going to happen? You're going to reign. People fight against you and try to destroy you because you carry truth in an inconvenient hour. The problem isn't the truth. The problem is the hour you're carrying it in. You carrying truth when folks don't want it. They want what they want and your truth is in the way of it. Yeah. Yeah. Your parents may have denied Christ access to them all their lives. Now you grew up and you don't have and your parents mad at you because you surrendered completely to them. And they didn't. Now you're making them look bad like they did something wrong and like their whole life was a waste. Well, because our world is wicked, the devil uses people to tear you down. But God sees and what? Knows. He's watching everything. He allows it because when you stand for him, you will receive the crown of life he has promised. Matthew 5 and 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. He said, blessed are you. Why? Because you're going to receive a crown of life for allowing folks to tear you down without retaliation. You know, that takes some powerful meekness from the Holy Ghost for you to sit back and let folks dog you out. But you're like Jesus when you do it. They spit on him and cussed him and everything. Nailed him to the cross and he didn't say anything. Ultimate meekness. Could have just winked an eye and everything could have ended. I'm not talking about the stuff that was happening right there. I'm talking about everything could have ended. Can I keep preaching in here? Y'all enjoying this? Amen. 
The devil will use jealousy, envy, hatred, and deceit in people to cause them to fight against those that have been delivered from these things. When people attack truth and those that carry truth, they are really fighting against the light that shows up their own issues. So they're not even mad at you. They're mad at the light because the light shows their darkness. Second Peter 3 and 3, knowing this first, that there shall come a Come in the last days, what? Scoffers doing what? Walking after their own lust. That's in the church. Y'all know the church is going to be the enemy of the church in the last day. Amen. You ain't got to worry about the world attacking the church. The church is going to attack the church. It was the religious, religious leaders that killed Jesus. Those of us that carry truth will be persecuted and ridiculed. They will do all they can to make us look bad in this hour. But we must remember just how bad they made our Savior and his disciples look to the people of their time. They will also attempt to discredit the truth so the people would not hear it or receive it. 1 Peter 4 and 14. If ye be reproached for, thy, uh, for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth where? Upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he's what? Glorified. Glorified. Oh, the word will preach. Summary. See, that didn't take long, did it? Amen. Somebody, you ought to be this short every Sunday. Hope it snow every Sunday. The snow crowd. In order to overcome the trials in our lives, we must first acknowledge what type of trial it is. And pray a focused prayer against this origin. In order to overcome the trials in our lives, we must first acknowledge what type of trial it is. And pray a what? Focus prayer against its origin. So you got to pray the right prayer for the right trial. Evildoers, you will suffer for what you do to people when you purposely set out to harm or hurt them. You will suffer if you are doing things to yourself that you should not. This is what makes the commandment, love thy neighbor as thyself, so strong. You cannot sin without hurting someone else. Even when you sin against your own body, the consequences will affect someone else. Did you know that? Yeah, if you're sinning against yourself, you're single and you're sinning against your own body. When you marry, that's going to affect your marriage. There's no way around it. Sin is going to hurt somebody else. That's why you can sum all the commandments up with love thy neighbor as thyself. Person that loves thy neighbor as, the, as their, their selves is going to live right. You cannot sin. Oh, where was I? So we must not suffer as evildoers, but we must do good every chance we get. Treat people right. Look at somebody and say, treat people right. Stop fighting against them because of how you feel about yourself. <laughs> Did you catch that? It ain't how you feel about them. You fight against people because of how you feel about yourself. Yeah. That's why when you unload on them and do them wrong and then get to yourself, you don't feel any better. Because they, they weren't the issue. Treat people right. Stop gossiping and tearing others down because you didn't get what you wanted. Stop doing things that you know to be wrong in secret, thinking it's not hurting anyone else or it's not that bad. You know, in secret, your mind will tell you anything. Your mind, oh, it ain't that bad. You can have that. God has ordained. And, you know, you become your own preacher. Your, your mind, then you go on YouTube and find some old crazy person agreeing with you you entitled to as many wives as you want because David had a whole bunch of wives I wish God would just set a Goliath in front of everybody that claimed that see how David you are just bring the line you just wake up oh, standing over your bed oh, uh, forgive me Lord You will pay for these actions 
And when you are going through the consequences, it will be hard to deny that you have brought yourself to these bad times. Own up to it being your own fault. And pray to God for forgiveness and restoration. This is evildoers. Repentance means to change. Don't just say you are sorry. Truly repent so your cycles of drama will cease. Amen. That ain't, that ain't no trial. That's drama from your evil doing. Can't rebuke the devil. Don't be trying to. Nope. You did that. Quit doing it. Let that trial teach you how not to do that again. Anybody ever been in trouble because they did evil? Amen. So don't be, ooh, the storms keep on raging in my life. Sometimes it's hard to tell the night. But they, you know, you can't even get through it. You did that. Quit singing that song. <laughs> there ain't no storm. That's man-made. You put them chemtrails up. You was in the plane just flying. <laughs> Putting all them chemtrails. You caused that storm. <laughs> Life's challenges. Life happens. Look, somebody say, life happens. You know, don't email me, call me, text. Don't, don't do none of that asking me why this and that. Life will happen. It's just going to happen. That's why you got to stay in the word. The word will keep you sound, understanding that. You'll read about people in the Bible that life happened to. Life happens. Loved ones die. We get sick. We lose money, jobs, houses, cars, etc. Car wrecks, bad storms and weather can destroy things. Haphazard events occur all the time. And it doesn't mean that it's the devil doing things to us. I'm a preacher in here. Sometimes it's just what? Life happening. Because we are in a world where there are many moving parts. There will be issues. I don't care how much you pay for your car. Just because there are a whole bunch of moving parts in it. It could break at any time. I don't care how much you paid for it. I have a testimony about that. But I'm not going to even go into that. It's, what the warranty costs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if one thing break, you in trouble. Life could happen. <laughs> Don't tell you that part. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, you understand. But it, it just... A lot of moving parts. There will be issues, circumstances, situations, and happenings that are completely out of our control. In these instances, speaking and rebuking the devil doesn't really work. Got a flat tire. Oh, the devil trying to stop me from getting to that grocery store. He wants me to wait in a long line. But Satan, you a liar. I'm going to get to the front of the line. I'm going to fix this tire. Somebody just going to drive by and help me. When the last time you checked your tire pressure? Will you leave the Lord alone? My dog died. Oh, that's the devil killed my dog. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my dog is dead. He was a hundred. <laughs> Feeding him just food off the table. He ate what y'all ate. How long did you think he was going to live? Dog eating grits. Sandwiches and grits, Cheetos, flaming hots. <laughs> he ain't like you. And then he died. Oh, the devil, the devil. Get out. Lord, wake him up. God, get him up. Get 
get him up from there. Wake up, Ruffy. Oh, get up, Ruffy. Ruffy, up, up in the name, in the name that's above every name. Get up. In these instances, speaking and rebuking the devil doesn't work. Amen. Some of y'all, that happened to y'all. That's why you understand. Amen. Ran out of gas. Oh, God, the, the devil don't want. You didn't put gas. It's an automobile. You have to put gas in it. I didn't have the gas. Well, then you shouldn't have went. That's, your tank spoke to you. Your tank. You, you, you. <laughs> Let me stop. I'm not going to do the tank voice, but your tank, your tank commanded that you not leave. It commanded it. And you disobeyed the tank. <laughs> you, must, you must address God alone for his comfort and love to carry you through these times. He cared. Look, somebody say he cares for you. He cares, he cares for how you felt about Ruffy. He really does care. He cares that that broke your heart, that you lost that dog. He ain't going to wake him up. And you shouldn't have been feeding him grits. But he cares. <laughs> he cares for you. He knows how bad it hurts. He knows the pain that no one else can understand. The deeply rooted hurt and lack of understanding that you don't want anyone to even see because it makes you look faithless and hopeless. God knows. I mean, you don't understand it and you don't want people to see you pulling your own hair out for lack of understanding. Why would this happen to me? But he knows and he cares. Can you imagine how he felt seeing his only begotten son dying because we fell in the sin? How he must have wanted to wipe the whole world away and start it over at that point, at that moment. But instead, he endured the pain and shame of his own son's sacrifice because he loves us so much. Well, hold on and hang in there. He will bring you out of this if you can give him access to those inner feelings. Be honest. Let him know. And most importantly, trust him for a better day. He promised things would get better. Look at somebody and say, believe it. For Christ's sake, godly people who suffer, no, godly people will suffer persecution. The more wicked our world gets, the more we are in Christ. The more we that are in Christ, excuse me, will be targeted. Just by having the faith that others do not have, we are ostracized and ridiculed. People look at us gathering with no mask and no social distancing and call us a cult. They see the actions we are doing because those actions make people question their faith. They never talk about the fact that we have never had a COVID death, even though 500 plus gather weekly in our building. They never talk about the wonderful families that have been birthed in here. They don't see when a man stands up in his home how it changes the future of the children. They just want us to stop gathering because of how it makes them look and feel. People have even vowed to destroy us, this little bitty church, because of this. And yet their plans cannot stop the will of God. So persecution is what? It's expected. We must know that in these wicked times, there will be those that rise up against those that carry truth. But what better way or reason to suffer than to do it for the cause of the one that took our sins away? Even when we didn't deserve it, he restored us back to himself. We owe him our lives, so we must endure trials and the persecution of men for the cause of Christ. What can they do to us that God does not allow? When he needs us to fight, we will fight. When he needs us to be silent, we will be silent. And when he needs us to die, let us die in the army of the Lord. Because to live is Christ 
But to die is what? Gain. Everyone stand to your feet. We're going to read this last part. 1 Peter 4 and 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's business. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf, on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Praise God for his word. Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for this weather. Thank you for the snow, the ice, and everything that's happening outside because you've kept us safe through it. We thank you for the warmth that's in this room, just the luxuries that we take for granted, the ability to jump in a vehicle and, and engage gears and all of that to get through it. We thank you, Lord, for it. And God, we thank you for bringing us all here in spite of the weather. Thank you, Father God. And we just pray for those that didn't get to make it. That's our family, and we miss seeing them. But we understand some of them just didn't have the vehicles, the, the ability, whatever it was. But we thank you for the ABC family. And Father, we pray right now that you would help us understand this message even more so as we leave this place. When we leave this place, let this sink in. So we won't pray for the wrong things. We won't be rebuking the devil at the wrong times. God, we just won't be schizophrenic believers but we will be focused believers, understanding that some trials come from evil doing. Some trials come because it's just life. Some trials come for the cause of Christ. And if we can understand these and rightly divide how to operate through them, Father God, we can shorten them in many cases. So I pray right now, God, you would enlighten us even the more with understanding of our own personal lives. So, Father God, we can navigate through our feelings and overcome this year. We can overcome ourselves this year. Overcome things, Father God, that we've struggled with for so long. Things that we've gotten wrong for so long. Things that, Father God, we've done wrong for so long. Help this message sink in our hearts. And I pray for everyone that is listening, Father God, that you would give us the grace and the mercy and the understanding of these times. Let us be able to navigate through our own behaviors and thoughts and actions during this time so that we can get closer and closer to who you want us to be. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.